1130, but we have much more coming your way on 11 Alive News at noon. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. And breaking news from the Falcons, another coronavirus case hitting the organization, the very latest from the camp and plans for the future. COVID on the campaign trail, Kamala Harris, Senator Kamala Harris temporarily suspending all travel, how it could impact the race for president with less than three weeks until election day. And two town halls in two different cities. The battle for the White House will be split on two channels tonight after the presidential debate scheduled for today was canceled. More on what you can expect. But first, our breaking news, the Atlanta Falcons shutting down its training facility in Flowery Branch after someone tested positive for COVID-19. Nick Sturdivant live outside Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And Nick, there are a lot of questions, including whether it's a player or a coach and what this means for Sunday's matchup against the Minnesota Vikings, a team I might add here that's all too familiar with shutting down operations due to the virus. Yeah, good afternoon, Chiba. They are scheduled to play the Vikings this Sunday in Minnesota. It's still unclear if that will actually happen. Earlier this week on Sunday, they played the Carolina Panthers here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Now, we got a statement from the Atlanta Falcons earlier this morning. I want to take you to that statement. In the statement from the Falcons, it says, out of an abundance of caution following one new positive test, we have made the decision to stop all in-person work at IBM Performance Field Thursday. It goes on to say, that all operations will be virtual. On Tuesday, the Falcons organization told us that rookie D tackle Marlon Davidson was placed on the reserve COVID list. The team says it's following the NFL's supplemental uh, intensive protocols at their facility, which includes daily testing, allowing only 10 players in the weight room at a time, and no football activities and gatherings outside the facility, among many other things. Now, the NFL Network is reporting that it was an assistant coach that tested positive for COVID-19. The team has not confirmed anything thus far. The team also canceling all media availability today. And Sheba, just three weeks ago, another Falcon rookie, A.J. Terrell, was, became the first NFL player to be placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. All right, Nick, thank you. We'll stay on top of this breaking news story for all of you. Look for updates on 11alive.com. This is also breaking. Democratic vice presidential nominee Senator Kamala Harris canceling all travel through Sunday after two people connected with the campaign tested positive for coronavirus. Senator Harris's communications director and a flight crew member. These are the two identified. The Biden campaign says neither Harris nor Joe Biden had close contact with the pair as defined by the CDC or during the two days prior to their positive tests. They say suspending her in-person campaign events is out of an abundance of caution. Senator Harris's husband is expected to visit Metro Atlanta on Sunday. We reached out to the campaign to see if it's still happening. We have not heard back yet. Now to the pandemic's impact on Georgia hospitals. The state reporting 150 new people checked into the hospital in its daily COVID-19 report yesterday. The number of active patients remained about the same. The good news, we had nearly twice as many test results reported yesterday compared to the day before. Even with that increase in testing, we did not see a significant rise in new infections. Two new COVID-19 studies getting a lot of attention at this noon. Research now suggests your blood type may affect how your body responds to the virus. NBC's Kristen Dahlgren has a closer look. This morning, new research may answer a question that has stumped top doctors since the start of the pandemic. I have been puzzled from the beginning, but it is very strange how one individual can get infected and have either mild and no symptoms, and another individual could rapidly deteriorate. Now, two studies published Wednesday suggest people with type O blood may be less affected by COVID-19. Danish researchers sampled almost half a million COVID tests and found people with other blood types were more likely to test positive than those with type O. While a second Canadian study found people with O or B blood appear to have less severe symptoms. Even finding of all the 95 critically ill patients involved in their study, those with A and AB type blood were more likely to require dialysis and to be put on a ventilator. I was just having really like difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, I was fatigued. Lisa Merck was hospitalized with COVID in March and says she still experiences flare-ups. Her blood type, 
A positive. Still, there is no evidence to suggest that any blood type is either totally protected or doomed. As far as other possible risk factors, multiple studies have found men develop worse symptoms and are more likely to die from COVID-19. While there's no evidence of a genetic link between minorities and COVID, one study found black and ethnically mixed patients are three times more likely to be hospitalized. People of color are also more likely to have underlying health conditions, dense living situations, and be considered an essential worker, all making minorities more susceptible to COVID-19, as more light is shed on the novel virus. And new this morning, jobless claims. New this afternoon at noon, jobless claims have gone up again nationwide. The Department of Labor says 898,000 Americans filed for first-time unemployment last week. That's 53,000 more than the prior week and higher than analysts expected. Here in Georgia, more than 53,000 new claims were filed, 8,000 more people compared to the week prior. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jesse McNeil. We have a few clouds overhead, but don't let that stop you from getting out and uh, participating in whatever it is you need to do safely, of course, maybe getting out to vote this afternoon. You're looking at uh, clouds in place, but uh, again, don't expect much rain from those clouds at all. You may get a dot or two on your windshield, and it will be warm out there. Our winds have shifted from uh, the east to now a southerly flow, and so that's going to help boost up those temperatures a bit. Looking at a temperature of near 80 degrees for this afternoon, so you can wear your short sleeves like I'm a little golfer right here getting it in you know you got to practice those swings every now and again every now and again here's a better look at the clouds you can see it on the radar here we have mostly cloudy skies mainly east of the city of atlanta is where you're going to find that uh, over toward athens up toward murrayville atlanta you, you may have more clouds than you do sun but more sun over toward the west for example in rome you got mostly sunny skies there uh, just check the uh, camera there looking good too in rome downtown rome looking at 73 degrees right now in atlanta 73 over in athens 74 in rome where we have that sunshine 75 in edenton 70 in thomaston a couple 60s sprinkled in like like Athens at 68, 64 degrees right now in Canton. Again, heating up to close to 80 degrees for this afternoon. It's going to be nice this evening as well. Uh, we got a front that's going to be pushing through the area, which will change our forecast for tomorrow. In fact, I think we'll start off with a few clouds, but by the afternoon, we'll get the sunshine back. But noticeably cooler tomorrow and as we head into the weekend. I have the details on that and the full forecast straight ahead. Sheba, back to you. Mm -hmm. I heard you say cooler, Chesley. I heard it. It is day four of early voting and new numbers from the Secretary of State's office shows nearly 915,000 Georgians have already voted by mail or in person. The record turnout continues and counties all across the metro are working hard to shorten wait times and solve technical issues. Douglas County election officials just announced it's opening up two new locations earlier than planned. Mara Sirianni explains. Here in Douglas County, they've opened up two additional early voting sites ahead of schedule. The goal is to cut down on lines like this one outside the courthouse. I figure if I have to get in this morning, I have to come in early. Raymond Harris was the first person in line just before 6 a.m. outside the Douglas County Courthouse. It's now one of four early voting locations across the county. Officials say as of yesterday, more than 3,500 residents voted in person. Due to the sheer volume of early voters, elections officials decided to open up two additional sites today instead of waiting until Monday. Douglas County residents can now vote at Boundary Waters Aquatic Center along Highway 92 and over at Deerlick Park along Mack Road. Both locations will be opening up today from 9 to 6. You can also early vote at the Woody Fight Senior Center. To get these additional polling locations open earlier, we needed to get staff in place. We needed to get preparations underway and set up. And that's what took just a little bit of time. For a look at all early voting locations and times here in Douglas County, head to 11alive.com. Well, this should help Fulton County launching a new tool allowing voters to check wait times before heading to the polls. You can find the information on the county's website. We've posted a link on the 11 Alive app under the As Seen on TV section. Gwinnett and Cobb counties are also posting wait times. Cobb's website, however, warning the estimates are updated periodically and may not reflect the actual wait times. 11 Alive is dedicating to, dedicated to making sure your vote is secure. If you have a problem at the polls or a question, contact the 11 Alive voter access team. You can email us at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com or text us at 404-885-7600. And don't forget to check out our voter resource guide on 11alive.com slash vote. 
Some are calling it a ratings battle. President Trump and Joe Biden preparing for dueling town hall events tonight at the same time. The previously scheduled debate called off. Here's NBC's Hallie Jackson. And if Not face to face, but still head to head tonight. Two candidates, two town halls in two key battlegrounds. Former Vice President Joe Biden set to speak with voters in Pennsylvania with President Donald Trump here in South Florida two weeks after testing positive for the coronavirus. The audience will be socially distanced and required to wear masks. The dueling events happening instead of that presidential debate initially slated for tonight scrapped when the president backed out of a virtual debate after his COVID diagnosis at an Iowa rally overnight sharing new details about his symptoms and just how high his fever got. You're at a 101 or 102 and then you say, hey, Dad, I love this. You haven't had a temperature in years and then all of a sudden you have it. President Trump removing his tie. Oh, that feels so much better and letting loose on Joe Biden. Joe Biden would terminate our recovery, delay the vaccine, prolong the pandemic. And by the way, for those states, open up your states. Yeah. Open them up. But Biden's making his closing argument, too, with the help of a high-profile friend, former President Barack Obama, stepping back into the political arena to tout Biden's character. Integrity. He was always the guy in every meeting who asked, how's this helping regular folks? That podcast with President Obama, a preview before his in-person campaigning begins soon for his former running mate, as Biden's current running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, pledging he's all in for the next debate next week. Do you expect that the president's going to back out of that one, too? Who, uh, you know, I mean, he just changes his mind every day. Who knows what he's going to say? But Joe's been clear. He's keeping his promise. A new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, new this morning, shows Biden with an 11-point lead over President Trump nationally, 53 to 42 percent, with 6 in 10 voters believing the country is on the wrong track. Hallie Jackson reporting there. This is a live look right now as the Senate Judiciary Committee hears from witnesses virtually, all of them testifying about what Judge Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation could mean. This is all happening on the final day of confirmation hearings. Earlier this morning, Senate Judiciary Committee Chair Lindsey Graham formally scheduled an October 22nd vote on her nomination to the Supreme Court. The full Senate floor vote is expected to happen the week before the election. The U.S. Postal Service agreeing to reverse changes that slowed mail service nationwide. The move comes after Montana's governor filed a lawsuit against the Postmaster General, arguing that changes implemented back in June harmed access to mail services and prevented Montana residents from voting by mail. Well, the Postal Service agreed to prioritize election mail and reverse all of the changes, which included reduced retail hours and removal of collection boxes. This applies to all states. You don't hear a lot about male breast cancer, but it happens, and the number of cases is on the rise. Up next, hear from a survivor about his battle. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. 
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov. October this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and while the majority of cases involve female patients, rates of male breast cancer are on the rise. Sarah Doloff has the story. Reggie Hogan's has many titles, retired NYPD detective, role model to students at the school where he works today, and breast cancer survivor. Well, just watching TV with me and my wife, and you know, I started feeling in my chest, and I felt a lump over my left breast. That was in 2018. Reggie had the lump checked out right away. When they said you have breast cancer, what went through your head? A oh, wow. You know, I just, it was just, wow. I was like, are, are you serious? Male breast cancer is relatively rare, representing about one in every hundred breast cancer diagnoses, according to the CDC. But since men aren't regularly screened, the cases are usually more advanced by the time they're caught. We do see um, with male breast cancer slightly higher rates of mortality, um, and we do, we do attribute a lot of that to later stages of diagnosis, 100%. Dr. Lori Gentile treats patients, including Reggie and Novant Health in Charlotte, North Carolina, and encourages men to watch for changes to their breast tissue. In men, breast cancer usually presents as a small lump, usually in or around the nipple. It can present with retraction or inward pulling of the nipple or even skin changes to the area around the nipple. Family histories of breast cancer, certain genetic mutations, and age can all increase the risk of male breast cancer, but about 80% develop spontaneously. Like female breast cancer, it can be treated with surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Reggie Hogan's underwent a mix of all three and today takes medication and undergoes annual mammograms. I feel beautiful. I feel wonderful. I feel blessed. His message to other men, one of awareness and action to beat male breast cancer. Well, welcome back to uh, the weather, weather time, folks. Let's take a look outside real quick here, and you can see where over in, I was showing you Noonan last hour. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the uh, North Georgia Mountains, this is up in Blue Ridge, you can see where they have a few more clouds. So at times it appears mostly cloudy on the outside. No rain coming out of the clouds here at all. Lots of folks getting around out and about uh, this afternoon, hopefully practicing safety, of course, maybe getting out to vote perhaps. Uh, temperatures uh, will begin to heat up up here in the North and in Blue Ridge Mountains. Temperatures right now are in, in the 60s. Notice uh, we have the clouds in place. Now, no rain on the radar at all, but we do have the clouds out there. You may get a dot or two on your windshield. That's all that will pop up. So uh, I'll say less than a 10% chance for an isolated shower or two. We're also tracking a front that's going to make its way down toward us a little bit later on uh, tonight into tomorrow that could bring in maybe a sprinkle or two. Other than that, uh, we're sitting pretty and, and it's going to be a decent day temperature wise as well again getting up to near 80 degrees for the afternoon high temperature so you can wear those short sleeves even your shorts if you need to for this afternoon i'm going to give it an eight out of a possible 11. the wasometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from one to 11. 11 would be a perfect day but we would need those temperatures down to our average for this time of year which is about 73 degrees we're well above that for this afternoon uh, again we do have those clouds out there as well and so we'll give it an eight out of a possible 11. here's a better look at that front you can see this has a little bit of wet weather associated with it, but uh, will dry out as it continues to push a little bit further off toward the east. High pressure has been dominant over our area uh, for the last couple of days. That high pressure is now moving off toward the east. You get clockwise flow around an area of high pressure. So as it is moving east, we're back into that southerly flow, which is allowing the temperatures to warm up 
A. B, it's also allowing some of that moisture to move in as well, which is why we have those clouds overhead. Uh, again, that front will slide into the forecast area and behind it, temperatures will begin to cool down. So if you like it cool this time of year with your leaves changing, I understand fall is coming back to us as we head into the weekend. Three areas that the Hurricane Center is watching out in the Atlantic for potential development. Now, that potential development is very, very low. Uh, we had it at 10%, but now it's down to 0% chance for development with this X that you see that's over the Antilles here. Uh, it has been staying almost stationary, just meandering around. So it's something that we'll keep an eye on. Also some other areas uh, that have some interest from the Hurricane Center, but we'll be watching it because this has been a record-breaking year and we could break or at least tie a record of name storms. Back in 2005, we had 28. This year so far, we've had 26 with Delta forming, and so we'll continue to watch that as well. We have until the end of November uh, for the hurricane season to end. All right, here it is, our forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows this afternoon, those clouds in and out uh, right on through the rest of the afternoon and this evening. Here comes that front, and so you can see what we start off tomorrow morning with cloudy skies, but then by the afternoon, that gets out of the way. The front moves through, and some cooler air will start to move in. Uh, slightly cooler, but you will feel it. So we go from an 80-degree high temperature for today to tomorrow only down into the low 70s where we should be, right, for this time of year. Uh, but because we'll have the clouds in the morning, we'll only give it a 9 on the wisometer. 72 degrees will be the afternoon high temperature. Over the weekend, looks nice. Mostly sunny skies both Saturday Saturday and Sunday, but you'll feel the cooler air. 47 degrees start on Saturday morning. We'll get up to 68 for the high. Another 48 degrees start on Sunday morning, but we'll hit 71 degrees for the high temperature. Under mostly sunny skies, we'll give that an 11. Warming up a little bit as we start the work week next week. Looking at 75 degrees Monday, Tuesday 76, and then back to 75 by Wednesday. Earlier there was some hints of some uh, wet weather coming in. Now it looks like that front will stay to the north of us, so still going to be dry. We'll give it partly sunny skies for the rest of the work week. By the end of the week, I think it'll be a better chance for us to see a little bit of wet weather moving into our forecast area. Sheba, back to you. I know you're going to enjoy this 80 degree day. I will, but I will enjoy the weekend as well. A tough loss on the diamond as game three looked painfully worse for the Atlanta Braves. Highlights and lowlights from the NLCS in Texas up next. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are well, it certainly wasn't the outcome we all wanted, but we aren't out of it just yet. Your Atlanta Braves lead the NLCS two games to one following last night's devastating loss to the Dodgers. Our sports team is in Arlington, Texas with the highlights and reactions from the players. Good morning, everyone. I'm Maria Martin. Yesterday, let's face it, it wasn't a good situation for the Braves. That inning is going to haunt people for a long time, and it was the first inning of the game. The Dodgers, 11 runs, and Kyle Wright really just couldn't get anything going on the hill. Manager Brian Snicker said he got behind in the count a lot, and you know what he told him after the game? Nothing. He said, scrap it, move forward, because the reality is they're really going to need Kyle moving forward no matter how deep this thing gets. Good news is they're 2-1 to one in the series over the Dodgers, so they still have the lead but we've still got a game for to play tonight. I got still got a lot of confidence in him. It was just it was a bad day for Kyle. Couldn't get anything going. Kind of comes down to you can either feel sorry for yourself or or find a way to bounce back. And so I, I taking whatever I can from that one and 
and learning and being better for the next outing is what I'm going to do. You know, we're still in a good spot with, um, you know, the four games left. And, and uh, you know, we just, like I say, the whole, as a whole team, we just turned the page. Speaking of game four, they're going to turn their attention to 22 year old Bryce Wilson on the hill. He spent a majority of his year at the Gwinnett alternative training site and his first postseason debut going to be tonight in the NLCS against the Dodgers. All right, can't wait, can't wait. The CDC wants you to think twice about your holiday gatherings, especially during this pandemic. What to consider before your Thanksgiving feast. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even. The CDC wants you to safely celebrate Thanksgiving this year by skipping travel and staying home. They also suggest having a small dinner with just the people you live with, the greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, you know, you name it. And they add that even a small outdoor dinner with extended family puts you at moderate risk. The CDC hasn't yet offered up recommendations for Christmas, Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. The pandemic means the AJC Peachtree Road Race will look a lot different this year, but some traditions remain like the Oh Say Can You Sing National Anthem Contest. You can enter for a chance to virtually perform for runners participating in the world's largest 10K or the Peachtree Junior. Email a video of yourself singing the National Anthem to contest at 11alive.com. The deadline to enter is Friday, October 23rd at noon, so sing your heart out. Thank you so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon, everyone. I'm Sheba Russell. Please stay safe. Tomorrow's Friday. Eight to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.